zwei Geschichten noch, was ich gerne erzählen würde. Ich erzähle heute eine Real-Life-Story. Bang! Und dann sind wir so über die Küche reingegangen. Also. Und es ist wahr. Es ist einfach wahr. Ja, sobald die weg sind, geht's los. The, the, the most cool, is, cool story with Amanda Nunes, that, you know, because we were talking about the time that we, I was with her and she told me she would beat up Ronda Rossi. That was a cool story, but that's not the one who impacted me the most. She told me she, we were in the car and we were talking about Ronda and uh, she looked at me and she said, I'm gonna beat her up. It's just, I need to get there. That was impressive, but the funny story on that day that we parked the car and the government took the car. So we couldn't go back. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a mess the whole day. But no, the, the good story with her that I always like and I have it on my mind, I think it was Kat Sigano. Uh, and we were training on the gym, it was a Saturday. And it was only she and me, we were training there and we were doing weightlifting. She wanted to learn the technique of weightlifting and loved to do the training. And I was staying uh, on the gym, I was uh, sleeping on the gym in, in Miami. And uh, we were training and she goes to the phone and she does something on the phone. And then she showed me the phone and said, look, this is uh, the way you set up the fights now. I said, like, what? Yeah, yeah, I just challenged this girl on Twitter and it was Kat Sigano. And after that tweet, explode. Everybody liked the idea of the fight. And then I think months later or something, you know, she get the proof and they put it together and they, they make that fight. I think that was a fight that she lost. One of the last on the strike force, last time she lost like a 10 years ago or something, I don't know how long. But uh, this fight and that tweet opened the door for her to to show what she was doing to the world, you know, and uh, at that time she was not that famous. But after that, after that tweet, everything changed. So I always talk to the guys, you know, like about it, because it surprised me how being there in that moment when she said, like, look, I make this tweet, it was crucial for her career. After that, she beat everybody and she's who she is right now, you know, so those stories, they're amazing. Or the one we were talking before with uh, Luis Palomino, that he was fighting around the world, he has, amazing fights everywhere. For me, the most crazy two fights I saw with Justin Gaethje, nobody knows those fights because they were not on the mainstream, but one of the most beautiful fights you can see is destruction and violence and pure MMA highlights. And, uh, and then he went to burn knuckle and he become like uh, what he is right now and earning a lot of money, maybe becoming millionaire or whatever. And just like that, you know, just changing to, to another sport and paying off all the hard work he's been doing all those years. So you see your friends like next to you and, you know, you see that he's there in any moment, you know, for everybody. So it's, it's amazing. It's amazing that I have the chance to be around these guys, you know, like, and, and see the sport, how it grows like this. Uh, we were, you know, when I was telling you about that gym that I was training with Amanda, it was a gym uh, in, in, it's still the same gym now that they're in another place, MMA Masters. And I went there because Amanda was there and Luis was training also there and a couple of really good guys. Um, and I went there to train with them and I ended up teaching there. I, I stay in the place for a couple of months and um, yeah, it was a really good experience. Then I went to California and I trained also with Jermaine Randermie and with the other UFC fighters there. So all at that time when I was in the United States. So really cool people, really cool memories. Now, but look, these, these two people, these uh, Amanda and uh, Luis, they become millionaires and I know them right before of all that. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, like, uh, yeah. As, uh, and it could happen like this. Or well, last time we were training, you know, in the, in the PR, and uh, it was Alex cutting weight and, and my coach, you know, like Baba, he looked at me and said, look, you have a millionaire there rolling. And he's like, who? It was Khabib rolling, you know? But for us, it, it was just Khabib, you know, he's a fighter. But he pointed out that true, you know, he's also a millionaire. You don't know, you never think about those things. But yeah, true. So it's, it's, it's the other part of the business. You see people who are growing like this, it's nice to see for them. You know, have a good life. And uh, uh, Luis and, and Amanda, I know them very well from right from the beginning and they both really deserve that, you know. 
they have a really hard life, hard training to get there. It's not, it was not easy. When you see them before, you can tell how hard it was for them. Okay, the next Geschichte. <laughs> the next Geschichte is. Um, ich tue mich jetzt schon mal im Vorhinein beim Isaac entschuldigen. <lacht> Isaac, unser Boxtrainer, der damals, das ist jetzt 2010 war das, elf, äh, zehn Jahre her und ich war gerade frisch in der Kampfsportszene und ich war mit René immer unterwegs. Ja. Und der Isaac hat äh, eine Veranstaltung gemacht, das war Bob Sepp, glaube ich, wo er in Wien war und wir wollten das unbedingt sehen. Und wir gehen schon so hin zum Eingang und der Isaac ist da und dann sagt hey Leute, ihr könnt nicht alle rein, ihr müsst Bänder kaufen, so ist das. So weiter, die Tickets waren glaube ich 40, 50 Euro, was viel ist, oder damals 10 Euro Taschengeld in der Woche hast gekriegt. Und was machen wir? Ich sag so, hey, René, scheiß drauf, kaufen und René, hey, ich zahle für keine Veranstaltung. Telefoniert er herum, gehen wir, das war beim Budo Center früher, was, da gab es ja auch fast höchstens einmal im Jahr eine Veranstaltung, wenn überhaupt. Und gehen wir rundherum, macht uns irgendein Typ bei der Küche auf. Gehen wir durch die Küche, oder bei den ganzen Köchen vorbei, oder? Und dann durch irgendeinen Raum, ich kann mich nicht mal erinnern, wo das war, und in die Bühne rein. Und sie haben uns ganz rauf gesetzt, oder? und da gab es so Flyer auf dem, auf dem Sessel. Und ich war jetzt auf so viele Veranstaltungen und ich habe noch nie eine Veranstaltung gesehen, dass ein Veranstalter auf tausend Orten gleichzeitig war. Der Isaac war hier, er war da, er war da und der ist so nah beim Publikum spaziert, dass er jeden eigentlich er erkennen konnte. Und ich und der René, jedes Mal Isaac geht vorbei, nimmt Flyer und weißt du, halt vor Gesicht, dass er bisher vorbeigeht. <lacht> Alter, bist du der Wort. Uh, Isaac, ich werde dir das Geld für die Eintrittskarten mal zurückgeben, okay? Außer es ist schon verjährt, oder? <lacht> Gut. Das passt.